I just want to show you a couple of things that really annoy me about Windows 8. Now the first is that in Windows 7 we had a capability called Flix. And Flix allow you to do things like copy and paste just by flicking your finger or the pen on the screen in a certain direction. You can see here I've just created a copy of that file and now I want to delete it. I just flick my finger across the screen. And we could program those flicks to do different commands if we wanted to. And I use that feature quite a lot. Now in Windows 8 over here, you can see that if I try and do that, well, it simply doesn't work. It'll only work with the pen. You can see that I've copied and pasted that file there. Now that's something that I used all day, every day on Windows 7. And now I can't do it with touch, so I have to get the pen out in Windows 8. Another thing that I use all the time in Windows 7 is a right click gesture that was built in. So I could go one, two, and right click. So it's a very fast method of right clicking with touch. Now, I could of course hold my finger still and wait for that circle to come up and release it. But that was a much slower method than just going bang bang and right clicking. On Windows 8, of course, with the new touch interface, I can't do that either. So instead, what I have to do is press and hold, wait for the square to come up and then release. Now again, that's just too slow when you're doing this a hundred times a day. There are other options to right click as there were in Windows 7. For instance, with the pen, I can press and hold, or I can use the button on the side of the pen to right click. And I can still do that in Windows 8. Now the next annoyance that I have with Windows 8 is the handwriting recognition tool in the tablet input panel. But first I have to say that the keyboard option in Windows 8 is vastly better than it was in Windows 7. You can see in Windows 7 we just had the raw keyboard layout, that was all we had. Um, opening and closing the panel was a little bit tricky and we really didn't have any options. It didn't autocorrect, it didn't really do much apart from type. In Windows 8 we've got a selection of keyboards available to us. You can have the simplified keyboard like you'd have on an Android tablet or an iOS tablet. You've also got a split keyboard that you can choose from and you can adjust the key sizes here, small, medium and large, although the large is not particularly large. And I've also got the more complex full keyboard with the numbers across the top and uh, I can do things like brackets and symbols across the top of that keyboard just like I can on a normal keyboard. So that's really good. By the way, you do have to enable this type of keyboard out of the box, it's not enabled. But when we switch to handwriting recognition, you'll see that Windows 7 had a single line interface here for entering handwriting. And as you would write in the interface, it would recognize your handwriting and then it would add lines as you got to the end and you could have more than two lines. You could have as many lines as you wanted to. In fact, in Windows 7, you could resize the panel so that you could have it much smaller and you could fit even more. As you can see, I could have many, many lines down the page here. Now with Windows 8, we're stuck with two lines, and those two lines are going to be stuck there all the time. There's no option to switch it down to one line. It's the same recognition engine, but as you can see, it's been simplified to these two lines. Another thing that's missing is the ability to go straight to personalizing handwriting recognition, as, as well as Another feature that's missing in the Windows 8 tablet input panel is the ability to switch styles of writing input. So we could previously write in character by character or freehand. Now we can still do that, but finding the setting is much more obscure. And we could also go straight to the personalized handwriting recognition tool in here, which allowed you to teach the handwriting recognition system your particular style. And again, you can still do that in Windows 8. It only takes about 15 minutes, but it's much more obscure and it's very difficult to find. So they're my biggest annoyances with Windows 8. But what about the positives? Well, a lot of people do complain about the missing start menu. And to be honest, I don't rate that as one of my 
negatives for this Windows 8 operating system. One of the main reasons that I don't find the missing start menu to be a big loss is because I really learned to use the icons that I used all the time on this front menu anyway and then just use the search feature so if I wanted to look for a program or a setting in Windows like Flix for example I would just type in Flix and up that setting would come so it would search through the control panel through all of your documents through all of your emails etc as well as the programs that are on the system to find what you were looking for so if I wanted to get to Microsoft Word I would just write the word Word in there or type it in with the keyboard and it would come up in the top of the list in the program now for the same number of clicks I can do that in Windows 8 so that took me one two three clicks one two three clicks and I can do the same thing here so I've typed in the word Flix and I can look under settings, files, apps as well as specific programs so I could just click directly on Bing there to go off and search for that program in Bing or for search, search for that word in Bing or I could click on Google there and it would go off to Google and search for that word so that in itself is very very powerful and the beauty of it is it is much more touch friendly and it's much clearer and easier to see so I don't really think that that's a big loss in terms of the start menu interface well you certainly can adjust it quite well you can name groups and create groups of icons on your start menu you can resize icons as well just by doing that little gesture there so just pull down on the icon and click on smaller you can remove them all together so for example if I didn't want that one on the list I can just go unpin it from the start menu and if there's a program that I have that's not on the start menu and I consider this to be very similar to this front page on the old start menu what I simply do is I pull up go to all apps and I'll find all of my apps there and I could say reader yeah you know what I want reader to be on the start menu and so I go and pull it down the same way as I did on the start menu and go pin to start and now it'll be on the start menu there it is so really you can get used to that start menu style in the new modern what we used to call metro interface I don't really think that's a bigger problem as people expect it to be another good thing about Windows 8 is that getting around it is very easy so as you can see if I've got an app open like the desktop here I can just swipe in from the side to get to that app and if I had multiple apps open like this messaging apps there I can actually just swipe between them now that's a great feature because it allows us to get around the operating system very quickly and easily to get to the start menu I simply swipe in from the side and I've also got some context sensitive settings there so if I wanted to shut down I can do that from swiping in on the side on that menu there under settings start menu is accessible I can get to all of my programs from by swiping up and swiping up is a common gesture for example here in the touch based Internet Explorer 10 browser I can swipe up to get this address bar here or I can swipe down to get to the list of open tabs that I have at the top of the page here If I want to close one of those touch-friendly modern or metro apps, I simply swipe down from the top of the page and you can see that that window is closed. Now that program is now out of memory, it's closed, so that means it's not constantly running in the background. Although, to be honest, on a tablet like this one here with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a Core i7 processor, it doesn't really matter how many of these apps you're running. You could probably run a thousand and it's not really going to affect its performance. In the desktop environment we've got the old style Windows interface so you'll see all of your windows will be open along the bottom of your taskbar down here just like they were in the past only now the start menu is missing and that's really all that's missing there. So to show you the next feature that we should compare on I need a different tablet because those tablets there run at 1024 by 768 so Windows 8 really likes to have at least a 1366 by 768 screen resolution and some of the new tablets will have a much higher resolution than that again. What you'll see is that I can actually split apps just by simply dragging them and holding them on the side there and I manage to still have my Excel 
and desktop environment open there next to this picture that my daughter has drawn. So we've got this ability to split what we call metro or modern apps side by side. So to give you a better example of that, let's go back to the start menu and I could have my Bing application open here and I could also have my um, photos application open here and I could look at the two side by side and use them side by side as well. I'm not sure how useful that feature is going to be because the reality is that we still have the desktop environment and most of my app sharing is going to be done in the desktop environment. I'll have my tablet hooked up to multiple screens on my desktop like I do here and I'll have those applications running side by side and we still have the old style desktop window splitting. 